MySafetyTrainingOnline.com presents Walking Working Services Hazard Protection. Welcome. What topics will we discuss? We'll discuss the seriousness of trips and falls as an accident cause, what OSHA regulations are applicable to the topic, the general requirements by aisles, passageways, and housekeeping, as well as covers and guardrails. We'll give you definitions of floors, walls, and ceilings, and how to use ladders and scaffolding safely. Section 1. Introduction to Slips and Falls with Definitions. Slips, trips, and falls are the majority of injuries causes in general industry. They have the largest percent, 15% of all accidental deaths, and more fatalities than any other causes except motor vehicles. OSHA standards for walking, working services apply to permanent places of employment. Some of the most frequently cited violations in subpart D involve housekeeping. In 1910.22a, drainage must be maintained and gratings, mats, and raised platforms must be provided where wet processes are used. Every floor, working place, and passageway must be kept flea free of nails, splinters, holes, and loose boards. OSHA defines a standard railing as consisting of a top rail, mid rail, and posts. The height from the upper surface of the top rail to the floor level is 42 inches. The mid rail height is 21 inches and a standard tow board is defined as 4 inches high but with not more than a quarter inch clearance above the floor. OSHA defines ladderway floor openings under dot 22A2 which states guard with a standard railing with a tow board on all exposed sides. Guard the passage through the railing with a swinging gate or offset it to prevent someone from walking into the opening. An opening is, is defined as measuring less than 12 inches but more than 1 inch in its least dimension in a floor, platform, pavement, or yard through which materials but not persons may fall. Every floor hole in which persons can accidentally walk must be guarded either by a standard railing with a tow board cover. Dot 22, dot 23B1 states that an opening at least 30 inches high and 18 inches wide in a wall or partition through which persons may fall. Wall openings from which there is a drop of more than 4 feet must be guarded. Open sided floors or platforms 4 feet or more above adjacent floor or ground level must be guarded by a standard railing on all sides, open sides, except where there is an entrance to a ramp, stairway or fixed ladder. A tow board is required when beneath the open sides a person can pass there is moving machinery. Open sided floors, walkways, platforms and runways are covered under Dot 23C3, which stated, Regardless of height, a standard railing and tow board must be used to guard open sided floors, walkways, platforms, and runways above or adjacent to dangerous equipment, pickling or gal galvanizing tanks, degreasing units, and similar hazards. Dot 22B states general requirements for aisles and passageway which are meant to keep clear, keep clear and move obstructions that could create a hazard. Mark permanent aisles and passageways and aisles must be sufficiently wide where mechanical handling equipment is used. General requirements for covers and guardrails under, are covered under 22C, which provides for covers and guardrails to protect workers from the hazards of open pits, tanks, vats, ditches, and, sim and similar items. General floor loading requirements are covered under dot 22D, which states load ratings must be marked on plates and be conspicuously posted 
Floor openings. Floor openings are defined as measuring 12 inches or more in its least dimension in a floor, platform, pavement, or yard to which persons may fall. That is found in dot 21A, paragraph 2. Floor openings. Floor openings must be guarded by a standard railing on all exposed sides except at the entrance. That's covered under dot 23A1. Ladder way floor openings are covered under dot 23A2, which means the guard a, with a standard railing with a tow board on all exposed sides, except for the entrance, of course. Guard the passage through the railing with a swinging gate or offset it to prevent someone from walking into the platform. Floor holes. This is defined as an opening measuring less than 12 inches, but more than one inch, in its least dimension in a floor, platform, pavement, or yard. Every floor hole in which a person can actually walk must be guarded either by a standard railing or a tow board cover with a tow board cover. Remember, when every floor hole into which a person cannot accidentally walk because of fixed machinery equipment or walls shall be protected with a cover that leaves no openings more than one inch wide. The cover shall be securely held in place to prevent tools or materials falling through. Let's talk about wall openings. They're covered under dot 23 B1, which states an opening at least 30 inches high and 18 inches wide in a wall or partition to which persons may fall. A wall opening from which there is a drop of more than four feet must be guarded. The standard allows guarding in one of, of the following manners, using a rail, a roller, a picket fence, a half door, or an equivalent barrier. Where there's an exposure below to falling materials, a removable tow board or equivalent must be provided. Section 2, OSHA regulations for floor and wall openings. Continued. Open-sided floors and platforms. Open-sided floors or platforms four feet or more above adjacent floor or ground levels must be guarded by a standard railing on all open sides, except for where there's an entrance to a ramp or stairway or fixed ladder. Open-sided floors and platforms. A tow board is required when they're beneath the open sides when a person can pass there is equipment which the falling materials could create a hazard. It's covered under tw dot 23C1. Open-sided floors, walkways, platforms, and runways have the standard of regardless of height, a standard railing or tow board must be used to guard them. Open-sided floors, walkways, platforms, runways are adjacent to dangerous equipment, pickling or galvanizing tanks, degreasing units or similar hazards must be guarded. Okay, the stairways and ladders standard calls for flights of stairs with four or more risers having standard standard ra railings or handrails as depicted in this picture. Fixed industrial stairs. Stairs must be slip resistant with uniform rise height and tread width. They must be able to carry five times the expected load with a minimum of 1,000 pounds. The minimum width of the stairs must be 22 inches. The stairway and ladder standard applies to interior and exterior stair stairways around machinery, tanks, and other equipment, and stairs leading to or from floors, platforms, or pits. It does not apply to stairs used for fire exit purposes, to construction operations, to private residences, or to articulated stairs, such as those on floating roof tanks. Fixed industrial stairs are required for access to and from places of work where operations necessitate regular travel between levels. Portable ladders. Portable ladders must be used to gain access to the roof or other areas must extend at least three feet above the point of support. 
Withdraw defective ladders from service. Tag or mark them dangerous. Do not use. Defective feet on a ladder. Never use ladders in a horizontal position such as scaffolds or work platforms. Never use metal ladders near electrical equipment. Here you can see depicted in the picture defective feet on a ladder. The maximum length of a step ladder must be 20 feet. Single run ladders 30 feet. Two section rung ladders 60 feet. Step ladders must be equipped with metal spreaders or locking devices to securely hold the front and back sections in open position. All ladders must be inspected periodically, kept in good condition at all times, must be free of sharp edges, splinters, oil, grease, and other defects which would affect their use. Always place the ladder on a secure footing and lock it in place. Short ladders shall not be spliced together to make a long ladder. The top of the regular ladder, step ladder, shall not be used as a step. Always face the ladder when climbing or descending. Use at an angle where the horizontal distance from the top support to the foot of the ladder is one quarter the working length of the ladder. Length along the ladder between the foot and top support. Fixed ladders. These are structures permanently attached to a structure, a building, or equipment. They use cages or wells if longer than 20 feet to a maximum unbroken length of 30 feet. Scaffolding requirements. They must be capable of supporting four times the maximum intended load. Do not alter or move them while in use and protect the workers on the scaffold from overhead hazards. If scaffolds are higher than 10 feet, use guardrails, midrails, and tow boards. Use wire mesh or between the tow board and the guardrail if people work or pass underneath. They must be equipped with an access ladder or equivalent. Damaged or weakened scaffolds must not be used. A safe means must be provided to gain access to the working platform level through the use of a ladder or a ramp. Never work on a scaffold during storms or high winds, ice or snow. Be aware of overhead power line hazards when working on scaffolds. Section 3, Walking Working Safety Summary. Dot 28 calls for damaged and weakened scaffolds not to be used. Ladders must be inspected periodically, kept in good condition at all times. Treads must be slip resistant with a uniform rise, height, and tread width. Wall openings must be at least 30 inch high and 18 inches wide in a wall or partition to which persons may fall. Guard stairways using one of the following, a rail, roller, picket fence, half door, or equivalent barrier. Floorway openings should use a guard with a standard railing with a tow board on all exposed sides except for the entrance. Slips, trips, falls constitute major industry hazards. OSHA standards for walking and working services include requirements for housekeeping, guarding floor and wall openings and holes, as well as industrial stairs and ladders. Thanks for participating from the gentle folks at MySafetyTrainingOnline.com.